Uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Nausin, for nice introduction. So uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Devaita Varman. I am currently working as an assistant professor uh, in the Department of Computer and System Science at, here at Vishwavati. Uh, uh, now, today, uh, in this particular session, I want to present uh, this topic, Exploring Open Source Operating System, uh, Unveiling the Power of Community Collaboration because most of us knew actually open source systems are actually uh, developed by a strong community of coders, a strong community of developers, a strong community of testers, right? So all the, uh, all these skilled people actually contribute their knowledge to in the development of these uh, open source open source software systems. Now in this session, uh, I want to talk about this particular topic. First, I want to uh, give you a little bit uh, introduction about what is an operating system is and what is the uh, purpose of the operating system, what, is, what are the functions, uh, how operating system works, then I, I will move to the foundation of open source operating system and what are the actually motivating and developing uh, open source operating systems. And then I'm going to present what are the key milestones uh, in the open, open source OS movement. Then uh, I, I want to point out what are the advantages, although uh, most of us actually are familiar with these advantages, then I want to uh, focus on a very popular open source operating system that is, that is Ubuntu. Then I want to focus on the aspects, community aspects and how uh, people collaborate while developing the systems. Then I want to talk a little bit about the development process and uh, I want to point out what are the actually challenges while develop while developing a new open source operating system then i will conclude my lecture okay so let us first address uh, the question what is an operating system so in a nutshell an operating system is the most important software that runs on a computer in our desktop uh, in our mobiles in our server it actually manages all the resources our computer has. Like, so what are the resources we are talking about here? So the resources are uh, the hard disk. What is the capacity of the hard disk? So whether it is a 512 gigs of hard disk or one terabyte of hard disk, what is the RAM? RAM may be 16 GB or 32 GB of RAM. So these are the resources we have, right? Now, we need something, we need a particular system to manage all these resources. Because we know that these resources are finite. So if you have hard disks of one TV, you cannot just store a file of two terabytes, right? So that's why we need a management system. So operating system manages our computer's memory. It manages all the process so that we can do uh, multiple things simultaneously. Uh, suppose in a fine morning, you wake up, you just boot up your computer, then while uh, listening some music in your desktop, you are browsing the internet. So at this point of time, apart from all the processes, the computer just initiated, you have actually doing two things simultaneously. You are listening to some music as well as you are browsing the internet, right? So the operating system actually uh, helps you to do all these two things simultaneously. It is playing the music as well as it is helping you to browse the internet, right? So most of the time, there are several different computer programs running at the same time, and they all need some memory, some resources to execute their operation. It also allows you to communicate with the computer without knowing how to speak the computer's language. So we can 
say in an actual that without an operating system, our computer is basically useless. Okay, so uh, let us formally define what are the functions of the operating system. So first, it it actually manages all the resources. That means it manages all the uh, memory you have. It manages all the storage you have. It manages all the devices that that actually that is connected to your computer, like your printer, like your mouse, like your uh, speaker, all those things. Next, it does process management. So knowingly or unknowingly, we actually we run various amount of processes in our computer. Some processes are initiated by the operating system itself. Some processes are introduced are actually introduced by you. So a good example could be when you are running your computer, you can if you are on Windows, you can explore a thing called task manager. So in the task manager, you can see what are the process that is currently running and how much amount of uh, processor it is consuming, how much amount of memory it is consuming, all those things. So this management is done by the operating system. Next, uh, it manages the memory. So we know that memory is limited. So here memory means the RAM, the RAM you have, right? So now why it is important? Because uh, if you can recall, what is the specification of your desktop or what is the specification of your laptop? Your laptop could have, could have actually like eight gigabyte of RAM and one terabyte of hard disk. Now notice the difference. So the RAM is always very small than your hard disk, right? So because the RAM tends to be very faster than the hard disk, right? So that actually indicates you need to efficiently manage the memory because most of the time when our process is executing, it is taking some amount of memory to do the execution. That's why that is why you need to manage the memory very efficiently. The next bit is security. Now most of the time when you are running computer, then at the background things like malware prevention, uh, when you are opening a particular file, the computer is checking whether it is safe to open it or not. So all the security side that is also managed by operating system. It manages the file. Now, why it is important? Because suppose you, you want to store our movie file and we know that movie file tends to be larger, like uh, it takes 512 MB or 1 GB of memory, right? So, uh, Operating what operating system does it actually creates multiple fragments of that particular file and it stores all that that file in the memory because uh, uh, it is very hard to get a consecutive one GB of memory to store that particular file. It also man manages multiple devices like uh, at any point of time. Uh, multiple devices like your wireless mouse, your wireless keyboard, your speaker, your uh, Bluetooth speaker, all those things are connected uh, to your device, right? Your laptop. So uh, to, to actually uh, ensure that all these devices work smoothly, you need a device management uh, software, right? This actually functionality, OS actually plays this functionality also. Uh, next bit is very important networking because most of the time our devices, our computers, our mobiles are connected with an internet, right? It might be a mobile network like 4G, 5G, or it might be your LAN, your internet through Wi Fi or a LAN cable, something like that. So, uh, OS manages that aspect also. Next, user interface. So, we need a clutter free, we need an interface so that we can interact with our laptop. So if you use multiple operating system like uh, Mac OS, uh, like Linux and like Windows, you are going to notice uh, those interfaces are quite different, right? So uh, suppose you are a Windows user. Now, if I uh, give you a Mac laptop, then at first you will be a little bit overwhelmed because the user interface, the way the icons are laying out, those are not familiar to you. So that's why user interface is 
a very important aspect of an operating system. Uh, next is backup and recovery. So when we are uh, we are actually uh, storing all the files, the computer makes sure that it maintains a consistent state. So what may happen, so suppose you are running a desktop, then uh, at some point of time, the power may get cut, right? But uh, suppose at that point of time, you are working on a Word document. So what will now happen? Is that document totally lost? Most of the time it does not happen, right? You can still recover some amount of uh, information from that particular file. So uh, to maintain a consistent state, to recover from a uh, uh, from a actually condition that is unintended, you need a recovery system, a backup and recovery system. That that part actually that functionality uh, is also offered by our operating system. Uh, the next bit is virtualization. Now think about a situation when you are running Ubuntu, a Linux-based operating system in your laptop. But at but suppose you need to uh, you need to run a particular application software that is based on Windows, right? So now what you are going to do? You cannot just uh, format the laptop and reinstall the Windows, right? It does not happen like that. So what you can do? You can create a virtual uh, operating system. So you will be still on Linux but virtually you can install windows to run that particular application software you are trying to execute or you are trying to run. West also helps you to uh, monitor what is the monitor performance of your laptop. You can actually uh, see how much uh, CPU it is consuming, how much RAM it is consuming, how much actually memory it is consuming, all those things. It also does all the system calls, uh, and it it actually helps you to detect all the errors also. Okay, now uh, what is the objectives of the OS? So while uh, while developing an operating system, uh, the developers make sure that it is convenient to use because unless it is uh, very user friendly, unless it is very uh, convenient, uh, users might not be interested to use that particular operating system. Next, it, it needs to be also user friendly. So to make computer system more interactive with a more convenient interface for the users, it needs to be user friendly. It also needs to be easy to very easy to access. So to provide easy access to users for using resources by acting as an intermediary between hardware and uh, its user. Then management of resources. So for managing the resources of a computer in a better and faster way, uh, then we have controls and monitoring by keeping track of who is using what resources, granting those resources request, mediating a conflict request from different programs and users. It helps you to control and monitor users of these resources. Then fair sharing of resources. It uh, provides efficient and fair sharing of resources between the users and programs. Because what might happen, so suppose you have a resources like a camera, right? So at point of time, at any point of time, multiple programs can actually try to access that particular camera, right? So how it is going to share the resources? So operating system actually does that. Okay. Next, uh, I want to talk about what are the type of the operating system. So it may be single users operating system. So uh, single users operating system means only one user can. Uh, access the operating system. So some example could be Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, Android, etc. But it may happen that uh, you need multiple users. So you can create multiple users to actually, who can actually access the operating system. You can also create multiple users in Microsoft in Windows also. Next we have real-time OS. 
So the real time waves are very interesting because these are very small, right? The, this takes very small amount of memory, small amount of storage. And the main objective of the real time operating system is that to do a very specific thing very quickly. So it, it should be very fast in nature. So some examples could be uh, free RTOS, VX works, QNX, all these things. Next we have network OS. Uh, some examples are novel network, uh, Windows Server, Linux. These are all network OS. That means uh, this operating system can run a particular network. Then we have distributed operating system like Hadoop, Apache Spark. Uh, we have embedded operating system like embedded Linux, free RTOS, Windows embedded compact. Then last but not the least, mobile operating system. Perhaps we are uh, more familiar with this particular operating system because most of us now actually uh, holds a smart phone, right? So, and all the smart smartphones actually run on mobile or operating system like Android, iOS, Harmony OS, all these things. So we know about Android, right? So it was actually maintained by Google. iOS, it is uh, actually maintained by Apple. Then uh, the new OS that is coming up is called Harmony OS that is developed by Huawei. Uh, next, uh, let us talk about open operating system. So, when we are going to call our operating system open source. So an open source operating system is a software system which source code is actually freely available for anyone to inspect, modify, and distribute. So these three are basically uh, uh, three, three pillars of any uh, operating, any open source operating system. So first, the source code should be openly available so that uh, anyone who is interested can go through the source code uh, to check what, what is happening. They are also free to modify any of the feature or any uh, function. So, so do you can system add some new features so the uh, last step is the distribution so after modifying it you can Okay, can you see the slide now? I think I was uh, disconnected for... Okay. Okay, so an open source operating uh, system is a software system which source code is freely available for anyone to inspect. Uh, you can modify this, you can also distribute it. This open source operating system actually promotes collaboration, transparency, and community-driven development. Now, what is the motivation behind any open source movement? So the motivation is, uh, actually motivation could be summarized in these five points. There should be some philosophical motivation. Uh, then comes community and collaboration. Then we have accessibility and inclusivity, technical advantage, and finally, the economic consideration. So what is the philosophical point of view? So philosophical point of view, we have, uh, so many operating system advocates believe in the freedom to use, modify, and distribution of the software. So they, they actually view the proprietary software as limiting users' freedom 
and see open source as a way to empower our users and foster collaboration. It also uh, promotes the transparency because uh, when you are releasing the source code, anyone can inspect the source code. So the operating system becomes transparent. So it there, there, uh, there is no chance that uh, there could be a malware, right? Because there could be a situation of data breach. So, so the operating system becomes transparent because the source code is available and anyone can inspect the source code, right? So you cannot just uh, put a malware or put a spyware in your operating system. Uh, you cannot just do that because people will eventually find that and it will be reported, right? So open source actually promotes transparency by allowing users to inspect the source code. This transparency actually fosters trust and accountability as users can verify the security and integrity of the software they are currently using. Next, we have community and collaboration. So most of the time, uh, open source uh, projects leverage the collective expertise of a global community of developers. So by collaborating on a shared code base, uh, developers can pool their resources, knowledge, and skills to create a very high quality software. Uh, the open source development actually models, uh, the open source development model actually encourages the rapid iteration and innovation also. So with contribution from uh, diverse perspectives, open source projects can evolve very quickly to address new challenges and opportunities. Next, the accessibility and inclusivity. So uh, what you are essentially doing in the uh, open source project, you are basically lowering the barriers to entry. So since the open source software is freely available, uh, by making it accessible to a very wide range of users, you are including uh, individuals, organizations, and communities who have limited resources, right? Who cannot just buy uh, that particular piece of software. So by uh, developing open source systems, you are basically uh, providing the opportunities to uh, numerous individuals, organizations, and communities to join that, to uh, to actually use that particular system. Uh, next, we have inclusive development. So open source projects uh, actually welcome contributions from anyone, regardless of their background or, or affiliation. So this inclusivity promotes diversity and uh, enables individuals from around the world to participate in the development process. There is also multiple technical advantages. So first one is customization and flexibility. So open source software can be customized to meet specific user needs. So you can uh, pick the source code and you can customize it. So suppose the, you do not need some features, right? So you can just drop that particular modules and by dropping those modules, you can make the software uh, very light, right? Very low resource consuming, very, you need actually very low storage to actually store and execute that particular uh, piece of software, right? Developers have the uh, freedom in, in the open source project, developers have the freedom to modify the source code and adapt the software uh, to different environment as well as use cases. Next, we have security and reliability. So the transparent nature of the open source allows uh, for continuous peer review process and scrutiny of the code, right? So anyone, since the open source software, source codes are already available, anyone can come and uh, review the code. They can uh, scrutinize the code also, right? So this collaborative, approach actually, actually helps to identify and fix all the defects the operating system might have. It may also help you to fix all the vulnerabilities and resolve all the defects more quickly 
and all these things will lead to more secure and reliable software. And finally, the economic consideration because it uh, helps uh, the hel helps you to save the save various costs, right? So open source software can offer significant cost savings compared to any proprietary alternative because we we have seen some use cases like if you if you go to the market to buy a Windows 11, it cost you like 10 grand, right? While you can just uh, easily go to Ubuntu's website or Fedora's website to download uh, Linux. And uh, by doing that, you can save the 10K. So by eliminating the license fees and reducing dependence or vendor lock-in period, open source solutions can help organizations save money while still meet, meeting the, their software needs. Now I want to uh, present the key milestones in open source uh, operating system movement. So first I want, want to talk about the Unix operating system because that is essentially the basis of uh, all the things we are seeing nowadays. So the history of Unix dates back to mid 1960s when uh, three major entities, MIT, AT&T, Bell Labs, and G, were jointly developing an experimental time-sharing operating system called Multix. So the initial name was Multix. So Multix had many features, but it has a few severe problems, like uh, the size was uh, very large. Uh, it was very complex. So eventually what uh, Bell Labs does, say they actually pulled out of that particular project. project. Then a uh, few researchers actually uh, decided to redo the whole work. So they are actually the initial uh, scientists behind the Unix project. Uh, the Ken Thompson, Dennis Ritchie, uh, Doug McLaurin, and Joe Shana. So these four people decided to redo the whole work, but uh, on a much more smaller scale. But remember that Unix was a property operating system, so it was not free. So uh, although few versions of Unix were uh, distributed freely, but essentially at earlier days, it was a proprietary operating system. So in 1983, uh, Richard Stallman actually initiated uh, the G GNU project. So uh, what he did, he actually established a foundation called Free Software Foundation and initiated the GNU project to build a new operating system uh, like Unix, although the full form of a GNU is GNU is not Unix. So their objective was to build an operating system which will not be Unix. Essentially, uh, Stallman's actually Stallman's advocacy for software freedom laid the foundation for open source movement. Uh, in 1989, two major things happened. So first, uh, Stallman actually come up with GPL, which is the uh, general public license. That actually ensures that the software that GNU is going to develop should remain free and anyone can modify and distribute that particular software. So whenever we are seeing these open source movement, they actually comes under that particular public license called GPL. Another thing, another, important thing happened in 1989 was the invention of the web. So the British scientist Tim Berners-Lee was at that point of time was working at CERN. So he invented the web and uh, the web actually released publicly in 1991. That actually fueled the whole open source operating system movement because uh, through web, it actually opens a efficient mode of communication, collaboration, 
among the community. Right. Finally, in 1991, uh, Linus Torvalds released the Linux kernel, uh, and the and the same year also Tim Berners Lee actually released the web complexity. In 1993, uh, the Debian Linux was released, uh, and in 1998. The open source initiative is, has formed uh, in 1995. Uh, although uh, it's not an operating system, the Apache HTTP server is there. But why it is important? Because uh, this Apache software, uh, which was developed by Apache Software Foundation, became one of the most widely used web servers in the world. So essentially you might say uh, it helps to promote the web. So it's open source nature and robust features contributed to the growth of the internet and the whole open source ecosystem. In 2003, React operating system was released. Now, although it is based on Linux, the most important aspect of React operating system is that it supports Windows applications. So if you have a Windows program, that means the EXE, uh, then you can probably run it on React operating system. Uh, in the same year, the Mozilla Foundation was created, which actually, uh, which eventually created the Firefox browser. In 2004, uh, the first version of Ubuntu 4.10 was released by a company called Canonical. So, and in 2006, uh, a real-time operating system called RT Thread was released. So it, it was released by uh, a computer scientist named Bernard Jiang uh, and his team. And uh, this particular operating system is coming from China. So it was RT3 was developed in China. Uh, 2007 is very uh, important year for we Indian because at that year, CDAC released first uh, operating system that is coming up uh, from India. So the, system, the operating system is called BOSS. Uh, so the full form is Bharat Operating System Solutions. Uh, it was a Linux based operating system and it was developed by CDAC, uh, which is the Center for Development of Advanced Computing uh, under uh, Government of India body under the Ministry of Electronics and IT. The latest version was released, I think the BOSS's latest version was released in 2021. Uh, then in 2008, uh, the mobile operating system Android was released. So it is a uh, mobile operating system based on a modified version of Linux kernel. And uh, it is an open source software, which actually designed primarily for touch screen based mobile devices like uh, smartphone, tablets, uh, all those. Uh, phones, uh, all those devices which has touchscreen. So at first, Android was developed by a consortium of developers called Open Handset Alliance. So Open Handset Alliance is a collection of developers uh, coming from uh, different companies, right? Different companies as well as uh, some individual developers were there. But finally, the project was picked by Google, and uh, most of the versions that we are currently using are actually uh, product of product that is coming up coming up from Google. But initially, it was uh, developed by this particular consortium, Open Handset Alliance. Uh, in two thousand nine, uh, Chromium OS was released. This was released by Google. And uh, eventually, uh, this is the open source version of Chrome OS, which is more familiar uh, to us. Uh, again, Chromium OS is also a Linux based operating system. So the common theme that you are going to see here, most of the operating system is one way or another uh, 
based on Linux kernel because that that was the initial seed uh, that is planted by uh, Linus Linus. In 2014, Ubuntu Touch uh, was released. So as the name suggested, this is intended for mobile operating system. But unfortunately, in 2017, uh, they actually terminated the project because, uh, of, because of the market's lack of interest. Again, now why Ubuntu Touch was important? Because uh, when Canonical terminate their support, it was adapted by UB ports as a community project. So Ubuntu Touch is still live, but it is not supported by Canonical. It is uh, currently alive as a community project. In 2015, another uh, Linux-based operating system, Solus, was released. Uh, now, why Solus is important? Because this is a pure uh, community-based project. So uh, most of the uh, Linux based ways we are going to we are going to see in the market uh, is produced by a company, right? But Solus is little bit different. Solus is a pure independent project, independent community based project. In 2023 is a very important year for us because uh, I at IIT Madras, uh, the initial version of a mobile op operating system var was released. So it was an uh, Indian government funded project. And the objective of the project is to develop free and open source operating system for use in government and public system. Now, what are the advantage of open source operating system? So the advantage could be summarized into these three points. First one is flexibility and customization because uh, most of the open source offers unparalleled flexibility uh, that actually allows users to tailor the system according to their specific needs. So users can uh, modify the source code, add or remove functionalities or features, and create custom distribution to meet diverse requirements. It is also very cost effective because you do not need any licensing fees. Uh, and that is important because uh, there, since there is no licensing fees involved, it could be picked up or adopted by many individuals as well as small businesses, uh, non-profit organizations, and that will promote that particular operating system. And uh, since there is also no licensing uh, licensing fees involved, that actually reduce total cost of ownership. And uh, the accessibility actually contribute, contribute to its widespread adoption. And the third important point is it is secure and it is transparent. So the transparent nature of open source operating system enables continuous scrutiny by a global community of developers and security experts. So the rapid identification and the resolution of several vulnerabilities coupled with regular updates enhances security and reliability. Okay, now I want to talk about the most popular uh, Linux based operating system that is Ubuntu. So uh, as you have noticed, Ubuntu was actually developed, developed by a company called Canonical Limited. So the Canonical Limited actually are founded by Mark Shuttleworth. So Mark Shuttleworth uh, is from actually South Africa. So hence the name Ubuntu. So Ubuntu uh, came from uh, a philosophy of Nagani people who are actually tribe of uh, Africa. The, literal meaning of Ubuntu is humanity to others. And the idea behind uh, the name is, I am what I am because of who we all are. So uh, Ubuntu was a Linux based operating system. It is very popular. Uh, it is obviously open source. So that means there is no cost involved uh, as well as this, this is a non-proprietary software. So Ubuntu's most uh, Ubuntu's strong focus 
is on usability so those they actually continue uh, they actually continue working on the uh, user experience of the whole linux based system because in the earlier days linux was very difficult to use because of all the commands you need to issue to uh, do a particular task right so uh, nowadays when you are going to use an ubuntu operating system there will be very uh, very small difference between any windows based operating system and ubuntu another hard uh, thing that actually faced by common users is the installation so earlier days the installation of any uh, linux based operating system was very hard so they actually kept on working on that particular thing and ensure that you can easily uh, install that particular software, the Ubuntu software. It is primarily uh, single user based, but uh, you can add uh, more users later. So initially it was released in 2004. Uh, the current or the latest release uh, was October 2000. 23, uh, hence the version M23.10, and they named this particular version Mantic Minotaur. There actually exist multiple variants of Ubuntu, right? So they actually customize Ubuntu for different uses, like uh, for education purpose. So the name is the name Edubuntu. So this is education ed edition of Ubuntu. Uh, we also have Lubuntu that is uh, lighter, less resource hungry and more energy efficient uh, Ubuntu system. And uh, the primary objective was to deploy uh, this, uh, this particular version of Ubuntu in IoT based system, Internet of Things. So uh, that was the purpose to enable a sensor based uh, system. Uh, there is a particular version aimed for Chinese market also. This is named Ubuntu Kaili. Uh, and obviously, uh, we need a server-based operating system also. That is the Ubuntu server. Uh, this particular version of the Ubuntu comes pre-installed some softwares like Tomcat, Postgres, QL, Docker, Puppet, Python, PHP, uh, MySQL, all those things. They also offer a particular operating system aimed for multimedia creation, like audio, video, graphic editors, and that is named Ubuntu Studio. Uh, there is also a system called X Ubuntu. So it, the aim for X Ubuntu uh, is to use in less powerful computers because if you notice uh, the specification of desktop computers or laptop computers is changing very rapidly. Right. So if you have a desktop or laptop that is, let, let's say, 10 or 15 years older, then probably you have like 2 GB of RAM or a very uh, slow processors, right? So that's why you need uh, an operating system uh, that is less resource hungry. So uh, for that purpose, they released Xbuntu. Okay. Uh, now I want to uh, discuss the community and collaboration aspect of any uh, open source operating open source uh, development process. So the first thing is the role of community in this particular development process. So community members play a very crucial role in developing, testing, and improving any operating system, any actually open source based operating. System because they contribute code, they report all the defects, all the bugs the system might have, they provide feedbacks on the uh, existing features, they suggest new features, uh, also they offer support to other users. So the community play a very important role while developing any open source operating system or any open source software. So community driven development fosters innovation, diversity, inclusivity, and it allows individuals from around the world 
to coll- collaborate on a shared platform now the problem is that how to collaborate right because uh, unless you have a sort of platform that that is accessible to all the users the collaboration might not just happen right so that's why uh, software various collaboration platform like github gitlab uh, is coming up because you need a common platform uh, while the development team is going on right so open source operating system embrace a collaborative development model where contributions are coming from individuals as well as organization as well as institution so this collaboration occurs through various channels like you might have a mailing list you might have a forums you might have a code repository repositories and essentially you need a collaborative platform like github or gitlab or something like that now next uh, apart from the collabor- uh, collaborative platform you need a solid governance structures so there should be a uh, steering committee there should be a working group who will facilitate the decision making process as well as who will coordinate among all the contributors you have now let us talk about the development process so all this development uh, process follows a regular release cycle because open source operating system uh typically follows a regular release cycle with new versions or updates or release scheduled intervals now why is that because you cannot just build a system which is error free you cannot just do that because there there exist millions of millions possibilities uh and you can actually uh any point of time you might not have considered some possibilities of this millions and millions uh, options right so when uh, users is going to use that particular software you are going to notice some defects that it keep coming up so at that point of time you need to fix all those defects and release all the new version so we are very familiar with this release cycle because most of us uh, use android based or ios based smartphones and you are going to keep on receiving updates so what are these updates so in these updates actually they fix some defects and they are putting all those features all those things in your uh, software right so that's why uh, you need a regular release cycle and this regular release cycles may include alpha beta testing phases followed by different release candidates as well as some uh, stable releases right you need to also offer long time long term support because you cannot just release an operating system then just vanish from the face face of us then your operating system will not be popular so ubuntu is popular because they are in the market since 2004 and they kept on working on that operating system they kept on releasing new or newer version in every year so long time support uh, is a very important thing you need to maintain in the development process because that actually uh, ensures the extended maintenance and support for the users who require that stability and reliability over an extended period there should be also a strict or well defined contribution guidelines so open source projects often provide contribution guidelines to help newcomers to understand the process of contributing code documentation and other resources because unless you have a particular guideline there will be trouble to integrating all the new features into the existing code base because the standard will vary right so uh contribution guidelines may include uh things like coding standards there should be well defined code review procedure uh licensing requirements and communication protocol so why licensing requirement 
is necessary because you cannot just copy a code from uh, another Linux and paste that into Ubuntu source code because you cannot do that because you need uh, that license to use that particular piece of uh, code base. Projects uh, also need to uh, keep a version control mechanism uh, to release all the new things. So that's why you need to maintain a Git repository to manage all the contribution as well as all the changes that is taking place in the software. Uh, now let us review what are the challenges we face during development of open source software system. First one is very important, hardware competitive. So we know that in market, there exist numerous processor. There exist uh, Intel i5, Intel i3. Uh, so apart from uh, the models, there exist various architectures also, because we know that the AMD architecture and Intel architecture is different. So that's why uh, suppose you release the operating system that only works on Intel platform, right? So what will happen, you are kind of excluding all the users from AMD uh, who are using AMD processors, right? So you need to ensure that your software should work on uh, AMD processor as well as any architecture by Intel, right? So hardware compatibility is important, right? Not only processor, you might have different type of RAMs because uh, in the market, there exist RAMs like DDR4, you heard the term DDR4, DDR5. So what, what is this DDR4 and DDR5? So uh, DDR4 actually uh, has lower speeds than DDR5, right? So the difference is in the heart. So generally DDR4 RAM has like uh, 200, uh, 2,400 megahertz, something like that. While DDR5 can offer you like 5,600 megahertz. So while releasing a particular operating system, you need to ensure that all the hardware should be comp compatible to that, right? So ensuring compatibility with a wide range of Hardware configuration is very challenging as well, right? So uh, you need to consider the fact that all the device drivers from where hardware support uh, require continuous development and testing to accommodate new hardware releases as well as configuration. Not only uh, the processor or the RAM. So suppose, uh, you release an uh, operating system which works only with the Canon printers. You cannot just do that because how can you excluding all the HP printers, right? So that's why you need to uh, take care of that uh, fact that you need to support all the device drivers, right? Which is actually uh, not, not an easy thing to achieve. Next one is fragmentation and divergence. Uh, since the nature of the development is open, it might lead to some frag fragmentation and divergence among different distribution and version of open source operating system. So since multiple, uh, multiple contributors are working in this particular project, there that might result in uh, lots of different distribution. Right, so you can just add a new features and distribute the operating system on your own. So since the nature of the development is very open, it might result in compatibility issues. It might result in very confusion state, very con confusion state in the users. And overall, you will face uh, a huge challenge to maintain a cohesive ecosystem. Next, you could have security vulnerabilities also. Since 
uh, multiple since your source code is available. So the uh, developers who might have a bad intention, he can just put a malware in that particular uh, OS and release on your own, release on their own, right? So that will uh, that will actually uh, that will decrease the security aspect of the operating system. So open source projects must address security vulnerabilities effectively to maintain trust and integrity. So you need to have uh, you need to have certain uh, code inspection uh, standards so that you can ensure that no one is doing anything that he or she is not supposed to, right? So despite the benefits of open peer review, vulnerabilities can still exist, which requires a prompt identification, patching, and dissemination of fixes, right? So uh, the sooner you identify all the vulnerabilities, you need to release all the codes to fix the vulnerabilities and you need to actually uh, distribute stable version of your operating system that actually free from all the security and vulnerability issues. Next, community dynamics. So since uh, multiple users or multiple contributors are involved in this particular, uh, in, in a particular development project, it, it is actually very hard to manage all these resources, right? So end of the day, they are all human beings, right? So managing community dynamics and fostering collaboration among developers, contributors, and users can be very complex because they might have different opinions. They might have di different priorities that may conflict with each other, right? So establish a solid communication challenge is very, uh, very hard thing to do, right? So you need to resolve all the uh, gaps that is forming um, among the, so when, when actually uh, it, it, it may happen that uh, uh, the contributors have different opinions about different, about a particular feature that they are trying to incorporate in operating system. And through that, uh, conflicts may arise. So you need to have a proper steering committee or proper uh, management in place so that you can resolve all these conflicts, right? So that's why managing uh, the community is a very hard thing to do, right? And uh, unless you manage the community very efficiently, it will definitely impact the project's progress and the cohesion among the team, right? Then you might have resource constraints also, right? Because uh, when you are trying to develop an open source operating system, you need to have uh, diverse, amount, diverse amount of resources, right? because you need to ensure that your operating system should work seamlessly in on any hardware it works seamlessly with any devices right so now let's think about a situation where i need to ensure that my linux uh, should work in all the printers right so to test that operating system you need all the models coming up from Canon, you need all the models that is coming up from HP side, you need all the models that is coming up from Epson side. So to test all the functionalities, you need a huge amount of resources. But most of the time, what happens in reality is that open source OS projects often operate with very limited resources because uh, the lacks of funding, the lacks of manpower, the lack of proper infrastructure, which actually affects slower, uh, affects the whole development cycle of the operating system. So all these resource constants often lead to slower development cycles, fewer features, 
and challenges in providing comprehensive support and documentation. And unless you provide a uh, well-documented operating system, uh, it will uh, actually affect you adversely while you are trying to maintain or while you're trying to uh, maintain that particular operating system in a uh, long-term basis, right? Uh, next, the compatibility and interoperability issues. So ensuring compatibility and interoperability with other softwares and systems, including proprietary solutions, can be challenging. For instance, suppose uh, most of the Linux nowadays comes with uh, the open office, that is uh, uh, Libre office and uh, we also have some other uh, office versions as well. So I need to mention that all these open softwares, they should uh, work seamlessly on the new operating, uh, new open source, of, open source operating system you are trying to build. So to ensure that particular uh, compatibility, you need to, uh, you need to have all the testing you need to go through all the testing phases so that uh, there, there should not exist any compatibility issues that may arise when integrating other open source third party applications, protocols, and standards. You need to also maintain a certain level of user experience in your operating system, right? Because nobody wants to use an operating system that looks like DOS, right? It should offer you some graphical user interface. And believe me, graphical user interface is not an easy thing to design. Why? Because it should not look like Windows. It should not look like Mac because end of the day, they can sue you, right? They can sue you because of the fact they are, because you are copying their user interface, right? So you need to make sure that the user interface you are trying to design is an unique. Right, which is a very hard thing to do. So, and unless you have designed and user interface that is very user friendly and intuitive, your OS cannot be uh, cannot be popular. Right. So, designing a user friendly and intuitive user experience poses challenges, particularly in balancing simplicity and functionality as well as you need to offer some kind of customization option. So providing a consistent user experience across different hardware platforms and user preferences require careful consideration as well as testing. Next, uh, your operating system should be uh, should be some kind of legal compliance, right? Open source OS projects must navigate uh, regularity and legal requirements, including uh, all the licensing obligation, all the patent issues on the export regulation. So uh, the team needs to understand and comply uh, with all the open source licenses and legal frameworks which could be a very complex and as well as time consuming process because these compliance are not an easy thing to achieve. So you need to go through all the licensing thing, all the legal frameworks to see you are not violating any uh, licensing obligation, you are not violating any patent, all the things. So you need to ensure that which is obviously a complex things to do as well as a uh, very time consuming. Another thing you, is you need to maintain a long-term support and maintenance because if you have a reputation that you just release operating system and offers no support, then obviously your operating system cannot be popular, right? People will definitely not use that. Nowadays, uh, when people are even trying to buy a mobile phone, they actually see how many uh, how many years the company will 
uh, offer you software upgradation as well as security support right that is your that is an uh, an essential thing you uh, consumers are considering nowadays while uh, buying a phone so you need to ensure that you need to provide a long time support and maintenance uh, of the operating system you are trying to release so that it becomes reliable right so so that's why but offering a long term support and maintenance is not an easy thing to do because you need uh, that amount of that sufficient uh, funding to become sustainable for a long term period so establishing a sustainable funding you need to maintain uh, well trained staff uh, you need to maintain a organizational structure you need to have a legal team that will guide you through all the patent issues and legal frameworks and for to maintain all these things uh, you require human resources well trained human resources as well as uh, continuous funding right and since you are not taking any license fees uh, so it is very hard to come up with a sustainable model that will support you in the long term next thing is adaptation adaptation and market shares so encouraging adaptation and increasing market share in a competitive landscape dominated by proprietary solutions can be very difficult okay now this is very interesting why let me give you a fact so all the desktop use all the desktop and laptop users you have can you guess uh, what is the market share of windows that is obviously a proprietary software and you need to fee you need to pay a licensing fee so that is astonishingly so that is around 70% so the whole os market for, for the whole os market 70% is dominated by microsoft another 30% another uh, approximately 20 percent is dominated by apple and only three percent of the whole market is dominated by the linux so just imagine although uh, the mac os although the windows operating systems are proprietary software they actually dominate more than 90 plus 90 percent of the whole market and the the total market of the uh, Linux is only three percent, right? So, so that actually presents the challenge that you need to encourage the users to adopt Linux, right? So that is the main main challenge uh, faced by most of the open source development projects because encouraging people to adopt uh, a new software, a new operating system. It's very difficult, right? So overcoming that barriers to entry, building a brand recognition and effectively communicating the benefits of open source OS are still an ongoing challenge. Okay. So finally, uh, although open source operating system offers numerous advantages, including flexibility, security, uh and community driven development it has a uh, vast challenges ahead of him right so collaboration and community involved are essential for the success of any open source project as uh, including any open source operating system development project but despite the challenges the open source OS development continues to thrive shaping the future of computing now here is the important question how we can compute contribute right because uh, you might not have the skill of contributing code right but you can what you can do you can definitely test it right you can definitely test the software and if you face any difficulties if you face any problems you can report that right 
so uh here is we can how we can contribute in this ongoing open source movement first developers who can code they can contribute new features they can uh, fix all the problems or the bugs that exist in the software because most of the operating systems they maintain a list they maintain a list of uh, problems that is uh, keep on coming uh, they they maintain a uh, list of new features they are trying to incorporate so you can go through them and you can develop that new features and submit the code uh, for a review purpose and finally if, you, if that piece of code code uh, pass the coding standards they can actually incorporate that particular feature or that particular fix problem fix into their code and release it okay next users who cannot code they can also help to improve the quality of the open source OS by testing pre-release versions like you you might have heard the term of alpha phase beta phase so those are the testing phase where a particular software system is going through the testing phase right you can uh, test all those uh, early release uh, by installing them in your computer and see whether all the things are running smoothly or not you can just plug in your uh, well as mouse you can just plug in your printer and see whether things are going on smoothly or not so in that way you can uh, help to maintain a certain quality you can actually help to maintain the quality of the uh, open source software you can also uh, give them feedback on the user interface so this is this uh, particular icon is not looking well this particular uh, icon should be small uh, things the small things like that right so you can uh, give the feedbacks to improve the quality you can also help for the doc documentation purpose so because when uh, people are incorporating all the features into the code they need assistance writing the documentation they also uh, need assistance uh, when they are trying to build up the language pack because most of the time you have seen now it is operating system is coming up with local language support so it's just not in english it can uh, it can be hindi it can be bengali it can be tamil so all those things need uh, the translation right so you need to you need to have that particular uh, manpower to do the translation so we can actually contribute in that also we can help them to write the documentation we can help them to do the translation uh, we can help them to do the documentation in different language which eventually uh, improves uh, the whole user experience and it will eventually whole actually help them to uh, build user guides and tutorials so uh, thank you everybody thank you for listening to this particular lecture now if you have any questions you can type that into the chat box and i will try to answer them